The concept of modern and safe anesthesia not only implies knowing the plasma concentration of the medication, but how the plasma concentration influences the one from the other. In addition to a pilot, within the concept of safe anesthesia, the anesthesiologist is considered an air traffic controller where he should have clarity regarding the interaction of the medication he is administering, its plasma concentration, and its infusion. In this concept, emphasis is made on the triad of the anesthesia. Hypnosis component yellow, analgesia component blue, and muscle relaxant component red. Trying to supply one of these components at the expense of high concentration in the others contributes to a pharmacodynamics misbalance that can cause adverse effects. Using more than one medication with the same objective, such as two opioids or two hypnotics, contributes in having more variables in the system and consequently more risks. In the concept of safe anesthesia, the plan is to always keep the triad of the anesthesia with the less amount of medication at the appropriate concentration and always keeping their interactions in mind. The following real case describes step by step the correct way in which the taken which is a target control anesthesia, should be administered. Remifentanil Sevoflurane on a 16-year-old male patient, weighing 65 kilograms, 1.68 meters tall, who is programmed for a septoplasty as well as a turbinectomy. The patient enters a screen room where the corresponding information is collected, such as height, weight, age and gender. The peripheral vein is channeled and a three-way valve is connected to the catheter. Through one of the ports of the three-way valve, the fluids are connected and the remifentanil infusion to another port. Once the patient is ready in the pre-operative room, the medication is prepared using the following standards. Blue for the opioid, which in this case will be remifentanil. Red for the muscle relaxant, where we'll use rocuronium. And yellow for the hypnotic, which will be propofol. Before beginning the procedure, there must be a flight plan. The flight plan is the identification of the different moments of the intervention, followed by the selection of the proper probability of no response for each one of them. In this case corresponds to a probability of no response of 95% for intubation, which is reached with a concentration of remifentanil of between 7 and 8 nanograms per milliliter and a plasma concentration of propofol between 2.5 and 3.5 micrograms per milliliter and a probability of no response of 40%. For maintenance, which is reached with a plasma concentration of remifentanil of 4 nanograms per milliliter and a sevoflurane minimal alveolar concentration of 0.5. The first step is to set up the primary infusion in the pump, which corresponds to the maintenance infusion. In this case, a plasma concentration of 4 nanograms per milliliter is needed, which according to the Tafur nomogram, corresponds to an infusion of 12 micrograms per kilogram per hour for an 18 to 20 year old patient. Adjustment of the primary infusion with the established objective, medication of 2.0 milligrams, volume of diluent of 250 cubic centimeters, concentrations of 0.008 milligrams per cubic centimeter, weight 65 kilograms, dose of 12 micrograms per kilogram per hour, rate of infusion of 97.5 cubic centimeters per hour. Following the adjustment of the primary infusion, we establish the secondary infusion for the intubation. It's necessary to know the concentration of remifentanil and propofol for this step, which with a probability of no response of 95% will be reached at the moment of intubation. This surface model represents the different isobolograms between the remifentanil and propofol. 
A probability of no response of 95 requires plasma concentrations of remifentanil between 7 and 8 nanograms per milliliter and plasma concentrations of propofol between 2.5 and 3.5 micrograms per milliliter. To establish the infusion during the intubation, we carried out the following calculations. Remifentanil nomogram, rhombus, square, and circle correspond to the infusion of 6 minutes of remifentanil depending on the age to reach a plasma concentration between 7 and 8 nanograms per milliliter. For an 18-year-old patient, it should be 35 micrograms per kilogram per hour of remifentanil in 6 minutes of infusion. There are three reasons for this time. First, to avoid the dislocation between the plasma concentration and the concentration at the moment of effect. Let's see the case of a 70-year-old patient weighing 62 kilograms, 1.62 meters tall. Propofol is administered to 1 milligram per kilogram in situation A in direct bolus and in situation B of the same dose infused over 6 minutes. Note how in both cases 2 micrograms per milliliter at the moment of effect were reached. But in situation A the disassociation was of 7 micrograms per milliliter which did not contribute anything to the pharmacodynamics effect. However, do have hemodynamic instability for being present in plasma. The same situation occurs with the remifentanil when it's administered in bolus or in infusion. The security recommendation consists in avoiding bolus of medication which is responsible for adverse effects. Second, to decrease the probability of muscular rigidity syndrome from the administration of large masses of the medication in short periods of time. And third, because a shorter time is now required. Therefore, within six minutes, we have the possibility of opportunely reaching the adequate concentrations of hypnotic and muscle relaxant. For example, 35 micrograms per 65 kilograms per hour equal 2.275 micrograms per hour. This value is divided in 8 micrograms per cubic centimeters, which is the concentration we are using. 2.275 micrograms per hour divided by 8 micrograms per cubic centimeters equal 284,4 cubic centimeters per hour. Since we expect said concentration for only during the 10th part of an hour, that is 6 minutes, we then require just the 10th part of the selected time for 1 hour. Therefore, 28.4 cubic centimeters is the volume which will pass in 6 minutes and the pump will be programmed in secondary infusion mode thusly. Rate 284 milliliters per hour. Volume to infuse 28.4 milliliters. These relations are followed in all the cases. After 3 minutes have passed from the infusion of remifentanil, 200 milligrams of propofol are administered, that is 2,9 milligrams per kilogram. When the propofol is administered, after 3 minutes of having infused the remifentanil, the lidocaine dose is not necessary since the injection of the medication is painless. When 2 minutes are left for the infusion of the remifentanil, between 1 and 1.5 ED95 of neuromuscular relaxant is administered. In this case, 30 mg of rocuronium were administered. After 6 minutes of infusion of remifentanil and having placed the complete dose of propofol and 1 minute later from having administered rocuronium, the patient can be intubated with the probability of no response at the stimulus of 95% and with excellent intubation conditions. Let's remember, the induction should take at least 6 minutes. First, to avoid the disassociation between the plasma concentration and the concentration at the moment of effect. Second, to decrease the probability of muscular rigidity syndrome from the administration of large masses of the medication in short periods of time. And third, because a shorter time is now required, therefore within six minutes we have the possibility of reaching the adequate concentrations opportunely. On our flight plan,
there was needed a probability of no response of 40% for the maintenance. Plasma concentration remedy fentanyl of 4 nanograms per milliliter and a minimal alveolar concentration of sevoflurane of 0.5. Once the secondary infusion is finished, the pump automatically passes to the primary infusion planned from the beginning. To reach a probability of no response of 40% in soft tissue, the plasma concentration of remifentanil of 4 nanograms per milliliter requires a minimal alveolar concentration of 0.5 of sevoflurane. At this point, it's necessary to highlight, just as an infusion of remifentanil is proposed to reach a plasma concentration, a halogenated inhalation anesthetics infusion must be proposed to reach the desired minimal alveolar concentration. If we adjust the infusion of the remifentanil in milligrams per kilogram per hour, we'll propose the halogenated inhalation anesthetics infusion in ET. With the help of the LaRue nomogram, we establish the ET of the sevoflurane required to obtain the minimal alveolar concentration of 0.5 in an 18-year-old patient. A 1.0 ET of sevoflurane is required to obtain a 0.5 minimal alveolar concentration in an 18-year-old patient. Awaking is an event which, as well as the induction, requires some conditions so the patient will awaken relaxed, without cough, nor hemodynamic alterations. At the moment of the extubation, a patient must be without the hypnotic effect, that is, awake, but able to tolerate the extubation. At this point, the concentration of the hypnotic must be the closest to zero and the concentration of the opioid in such a magnitude that it will allow the extubation safely. Studies of plasma concentration of remifentanil have documented that a plasma concentration of 3 nanograms per milliliter without levels of the hypnotic allow extubating the patient with a probability of 85% for no episodes of coughing. Keeping in mind that the change of one plasma concentration to another takes an average of 10 minutes and the lowering to zero of a minimal alveolar concentration of 0.5 takes between 5 and 8 minutes. It is recommended to change the extubation of the plasma concentration of remifentanil and 5 minutes later close the halogenated inhalation anesthetics and increase the flow of oxygen. When it's considered that there are 10 minutes left to complete the procedure and without making any changes to the halogenated inhalation anesthetics, the infusion of the remifentanil is changed to estimate a plasma concentration of 3 nanograms per milliliter. According to the top 4 nanogram, this corresponds to an infusion of 9 micrograms per kilogram. When the procedure has completed and only if the change for the infusion of the plasma concentration for the extubation of remifentanil has been 5 minutes, the vaporizer is turned off and the flow of oxygen is increased. Seven minutes after having turned off the halogenated inhalation anesthetics and 12 minutes after having turned off the remifentanil, the patient responds to a call and is extubated with a Ramsay of 2 and without cough. Once the patient has awakened, the extension of the remifentanil is disconnected to avoid the secondary risks to dead space. Hemodynamic behavior during the procedure. Thank you for watching our educational video. At Segenes, we are a group of professionals dedicated to the study of the investigation of products oriented towards the security of anesthesia and in healthcare in general. The most important thing in Segenes is security. Our main tool is education. If you wish to obtain more information about our products, our videos, courses, workshops, or wish to attain our chart for planning anesthesia, do not hesitate to visit us on our website or write us to our email. Don't forget, to administer anesthesia safely, you must think not only as a pilot but also as an air traffic controller. Until the next time.